And welcome again to the Temple of the Ten Commandments right here in beautiful Yadam Scout Reservation. We are here. This is Sunday of week eight. Can you believe this is our last time together? And so we have a few things that we really, really should talk about as we end this season as a, a reminder of what all of being together means. So, if you are joining us, please remember to place your name in the box underneath the screen. Make sure you place your troop number as well so we have your name and we can identify you and find you to be able to send you a special gift at the end of the season. That is what we are working on right now. So um, we're really happy that we're going to be able to do that and that's really exciting for us to, to give you all that gift because you have given us the gift of your presence right here. So we are in the Temple of the Ten Commandments. Also remember, something is always different. You're always going to see something different at every service, at every session. So why is this Sunday different from all other Sundays? Please make a note. What do you see? And what's different about it? So we are here at the very beautiful Temple of the Ten Commandments. There are a lot of things here. So we're going to talk a little bit about memory. Right? In front of me you're going to see the Book of Blessings. There are many blessings we have. Two blessings we have are the blessing of reverence. We'll talk about that in a moment. And the blessing of memory. This temple has many, many memories. I have been at Yagu for 20 years. This is my 20th season. And people say, why do you keep coming back to Yagu? And I will tell you this. In all of my 20 years at Yagu Scout Reservation, I have never heard, not once, one scout insult another scout because of their race, the color of their skin, their religion, their beliefs, their ideas. I have never heard a scout insult another scout. What that has taught me is that when we say our scout oath and law, we remember who we are. And we remember that we have a special ability to make the world a better place. We call that tikkun olam, fixing the world. That's your job in the world to make the world, somebody's world, a little bit better because you are in it. There is nobody like you who can do that. You are unique. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, what shoe size you wear, what color your hair is, or what color your eyes are, or your skin. Whether your ears are big or small, it doesn't matter. You have a special gift to make the world a better place. And nobody else has your gift. There is nobody else in this world just like you. And what's really interesting is, I tell this to adults too, 
If you stop and look at a tree, or a lawn, or a flower pot, every leaf, every single leaf, has the ability to grow. It grows in a way that it gets the maximum sunlight. And yet together, all of those leaves make a beautiful plant or a beautiful tree or a beautiful lawn. They all wind up working together. We are part of one world. We are each individuals, we are unique, but we are connected in so many ways. We know that if a bunch of people sitting in a room can send positive thoughts to a glass of water, the chemistry of the water changes. If they said negative thoughts, the chemistry of that water changes also. Together, we have the power to make the world a better place, to bring blessing to our world. So let's talk about some of the blessings, some of the memories that we have here. Mm -hmm. Jewish people once upon a time had a temple in Jerusalem. 2,000 years ago that temple was destroyed. But we have things here that remind us of that. We have a menorah, a seven branch candelabra, right here, that looks just like the menorah, the lamp that was always burning in the temple. It was burning 24-7. It reminded people that they had a special light to shed upon the world. We have our eternal light right here, which reminds us of that menorah. This light is always burning while we are here at Yadu. It is the first thing I light when I come in. It is the last thing I turn off when I leave. We have pictures. We have pictures. We have the stars of David. Right here which is a very important symbol to us. Our Jewish flag has a Star of David on it. People believe that this was the symbol that David's soldiers placed on their shields. I think, and this is just my opinion, I think that when you look at the Star of David, you see two triangles, one pointing up and one pointing down. Some people say that it teaches us that we always need to look heavenward, but also keep firmly grounded on the earth. I think that those two triangles were deltas. They were the letter D originally. So I think that this was a way of writing David's name. They remembered who they were fighting for. They remembered who their king was. David. And so we have that symbol over here. The old temple of the Ten Commandments was in the swamp down by Challenge. Some of you may have been there. If you were Weebelos, you may have gone to the mining company. The Ark door, the Ark which held the Torah scroll, was right here. And we found it and brought it up. If we can insert it, 
we're going to show you a picture of the menorah that is sitting on the back wall of the temple. One day when I looked down at the old, when I went down and I looked at the old temple of the Ten Commandments, I realized that the back wall of the temple of that eight frame was a seven branch menorah. And so we had that brought up and it is now mounted on the back wall of the temple. Now because we're on camera, you can only see the front. I'm standing in the new section, in the old section of the Temple of the Ten Commandments. If you're sitting further back, or if you've ever sat further back, you'd be sitting in the new section of the Temple of the Ten Commandments. And so these are the things that remind us. We even have a small can top, which was on a tree, which pointed out the way to the temple of the old site of the temple of the Ten Commandments. So these are things that we remember. And as we come to our Jewish holy days, these are days of remembrance. We remember. We remember our history. We remember where we are, where we came from. We remember the things that we did, good and bad, over the past year. And so we are reminded of all of those things and how connected and important we are to each other, just like you have patches and numbers and neckerchiefs and uniforms that tell you who you are and they help you remember who you are. Now, the most important section of our temple is our ark. If you actually look above the ark, you'll see another menorah that was created for us by uh, people in the barn, Matt Delva, many of you may know Matt, he worked on this, and a couple of the other individuals worked on this, and if you look back to one of our Sundays, he will be actually explaining that, and how he came to create that menorah. Right here we have our ark. Our ark. What does our ark teach us? A-R-K, our holy ark, acts of random kindness. This is what our ark and our Torah scroll inside it is all about. Learning kindness. Have we been kind in this past year? How can we make the world a kinder, gentler world? Because we, because we are in it. And we remember that we are special, we are unique, and there's only one like each of us in this whole world. But together, we can do many things. Even so, you alone have the power to recreate the world. This is what we celebrate on Rosh Hashanah, the world's birthday. The world is recreated. But each day, each day, you can recreate the world. And this is what our ark teaches us. Now, Every synagogue has an ark. Every synagogue has an eternal light. Every synagogue has a menorah somewhere. Every synagogue has stars of David somewhere. Every synagogue has a tzedakah box, a box for donations, charity, for good deeds, kindness. On our ark, which is beautiful, we have ten phrases. I'll give you half a guess what those phrases are. 
If you said they're the Ten Commandments, you're absolutely right. Why? Because we are in the temple of the Ten Commandments. That's absolutely correct. Now, some arcs are well lit. They're stained glass. They have, they're very fancy. Some are simple. But they all remind us of one thing. What's an ark? An act of random kindness. This is what our Torah scroll teaches us. So here is our Torah scroll. This scroll is older than Yagu. It has the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. If we were to roll it out, it would stretch from here all the way to the flagpole on Tim O'Neill Field. That's a long, long way. You can see right here on the mantle, guess what? What do you see? The Ten Commandments. Right here. The two tablets, the Ten Commandments. It was fixed up here at Yagu. This top, there were originally two like this. One broke off, and the rangers here at Yadu fixed it. So this is very much a part of the memory that we have of Yadu. Now, every Shabbat, every week, the Torah is read. A different section in order from the first lines of Genesis all the way to the end of Deuteronomy. And each synagogue in the world. In every synagogue the same, the same section is read every week. Section by section in order. But here at Yagu we only read one section of the Torah. If you think you know it put it right in that box and if you wrote it was the Ten Commandments you're absolutely right because we're in the temple of the Ten Commandments. Now, we have Torah scrolls that are 2,000 years old. And they are exactly identical to this one, which is older than Yagu, but not 2,000 years old. Can you imagine copying by hand the same scroll, letter for letter, word for word, for 2,000 years? without a mistake. Every scroll is exactly identical down to the number of letters and the number of words and the number of paragraphs. That is an amazing feat. Imagine, just find a page and imagining somebody copying that one page by hand without a mistake over and over for 2,000 years. The the person who writes the Torah scroll they'll call the scribe. They have to be specially trained and they have to use a special ink to do so. That's why we never touch the scroll letters with our fingers because our, the oil on our fingers might wipe out, erase the letters. So we use pointers. I have a whole box full of pointers. We point to our words. Some are very elegant. Some are simple. This is a left-handed pointer. It's the only one that I know of that I own in the world. This was made, made of bamboo. It's a very pointy pointer. And this pointer is a two-sided pointer. So we have many pointers that are gifts that people have given us or made for us over these years at Yagu. In fact, one year Bigfoot was studying for his bar mitzvah and even he made me a toast pointer. So, and this was in 2011. So, those things are very, very special for us and this is why we treat them with great respect and honor. 
the memory that made them. So, if you'd like to see what the Ten Commandments look like, I have a small color scroll here. I'll open it up, and here, the section that I'm showing you is the section of the Ten Commandments, right here. And we roll it out, and we read it every Friday night, every Shabbat, right here at Yad Mim. So this is our scroll, this is our toe. So, so what have we learned? We learned that our Torah scroll, by the way, our Torah scroll cannot be written with a pen. It cannot be copied with a pen. The scribe writes it with a feather quill, just like this. Why? Because the Torah may not be written with any metal instruments. Because metal is used to make weapons. What did I say about our Ark and our Torah? Acts of random kindness. The Torah is, represents light, it represents goodness, it represents peace. And we do not use metal instruments to create it. We use a simple feather. And can you imagine doing that over and over and over again for 2,000 years? So, this is very special. And what have we learned? We have learned that right here, that everywhere we look, we look, we hear about light and kindness and peace and hope and healing. This is what the temple teaches us. This is what we think about when we enter this space. I've never heard a nasty word here. And so, this is what I wish to leave you with on this last Sunday. You have the power to change the world. We celebrate a new year, but in fact, pretty soon we're going to celebrate a new year, but in fact, you can make a new year, you can recreate the world with one single act. So my challenge to you is to remember that you are unique. To remember that you are connected to every other person and living thing on the earth. To remember that you have the power to make the world a better place. And who knows that some act of random kindness that falls into your lap will change the world maybe for another person and maybe for an entire world. So I'm going to leave you with that. I want to wish you a wonderful rest of your summer, rest of your year, and I am so looking forward to seeing you right back here at Yagu Scout Reservation and the Temple of the Ten Commandments in a year. Thank you.